I get asked about abstract classes a lot, what they are, how they work, and why you should know about them. An easy way to think about an abstract class is to say that it fits between a full base class and an interface. Basically, it's a blend of the two. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate what an abstract class is, how to use it, and when it makes sense to create one. Now, if you're new to this channel, my name is Tim Corey, and it's my goal to make learning C Sharp easier. This channel is full of videos explaining the various parts of C Sharp. Now, I also have a website where I provide full courses on C Sharp and SQL. You can check it out at IamTimCorey.com. That is also where a blog post for this video is located. It includes the source code for my sample application, both the start of this video as well as the end. Also note that in the description below, you can find links to my mailing list and to my Patreon page. Okay, let's get started in our example project. For this application, I really cut out all the code that would be a distraction. I didn't want the setup to confuse the issue. So I set up a console application and a class library. And the class library have two data access classes. Well, kind of. They're actually just simulators. So let's look at them. The SQL data access class has a load connection string, which just writes out, hey, I'm loading the connection string, and it returns just this test string. The actual load data method just writes out, I'm loading Microsoft SQL data. And the save data says I'm saving data to the Microsoft SQL server. The reason I did this is because if I put code to actually talk to SQL, you have to get that wired up and make sure you have a SQL server on your machine and all the rest in order to use this demo code. And I think that really kind of hides what abstract classes do. So I, I didn't want to go that route. The same thing with a SQL Lite data access class. It's just three methods which just do console write lines. That's all that happens here. Now, both of these, if you notice, they're very similar. Load connection string, load data, save data, which would be an accurate portrayal of how it gets yeah, simplified on how data access classes look. So I created an interface called iDataAccess. And the iDataAccess class has three methods in it. Load connection string, load data, and save data. Now, just to demonstrate these working, not that we really need to run this application, but in the console, I create a new list with a new SQL data access and a new SQL light data access instance. And then I do a for each and run through the three methods. So if we were to actually run this, we'll get those three methods called for each. So SQL data access and then SQL light data access. So that's all there really is to it. So the point of this application is not a fully working application. The point is just to demonstrate what an abstract class is and how it differs from both a base class and an interface. So if we were going to create a base class, if we said, you know what? I really like the idea of the fact that we can redo this code. Load connection string is the same for SQL data access as it is for SQL Lite data access, which would be true in a real application probably. So we can create a base class. So let's do that. And we'll call this base class uh, data access. And I'll make it public. And what we could do is we could take this method right here and we could put it in the base class. And then instead of implementing the ID to access, which by the way, let's comment out our sample code here for a little bit. It's going to throw some errors otherwise. So instead of in, in implementing, sorry, implementing the interface ID to access, we could just, in, we could inherit from data access, the base class. And what that allows us to do is take away that one method. So instead of having to create load connection string each time, it gets created in our base class data access, which is cool. We're now saving some coding because both of these SQL light data access and SQL data access, they're both children of data access. And so they bring along, in this case, this one method. 
So if we, over here in our program.cs, if we were going to instantiate one of these, just to demonstrate, let's pick the SQL, SQL Light Data Access. Uh, let's call it DA equals new SQL Light Data Access. Notice that DA dot, we have load data and save data, but also load connection string. So great, we now have this being inherited down the stack to our children, SQLite and SQL Data Access. So this demonstrates a base class, which is not why we're here in this video, but I wanted to kind of start off with these basics because I want to show you the differences. So with this base class, we have some implementation code right here that we're allowing to be passed down to SQLite and SQL Data Access. But what if instead of doing this, we said data access, guess what? That works, but that makes no sense. Why have a data access class we can instantiate that has a little bit of code, but not all the code we need. Also, what is it accessing? Is it accessing, you know, SQL, SQL Lite? No, it's not accessing any of those because it doesn't have a load or save data methods. So this is kind of a problem. It's, it's messy code. And you can say, well, yeah, you can leave it there and it's no big deal. But that's not really what we want to do. On the other side of things, we have this I interface, I data access, which allow us to define load connection string, load data and save data, which allowed us here in this code down here to instantiate both SQL data access and SQL Lite data access and treat them the same as far as knowing they both have load connection string, load data and save data. That's the other side, an interface. Where abstract classes come in is where we blend the two together. So let's change this data access to be an abstract class. Now without changing anything else, what I've now done is I have allowed SQLite data access and SQL data access to still operate as they were the base class. But if I come over here and say data access DB or DA equals new, and it goes, you can't do that. And if I were to try and force it, it says, I'm sorry, you cannot create an instance of the abstract class or interface data access. So it's not gonna allow us to instantiate data access. But if I were to say SQLite data access, and I would spell it right, DA dot, we still have load connection string, load data and save data, which is great. We now have an abstract class. We've seen one of the benefits of an abstract class, which is it doesn't allow us to instantiate it directly. So a, an abstract class says, you can't create me directly, but anything that inherits from me gets this code. That's benefit number one. But we can go further than this. Because remember I said that it is a, it's a blend of interface and base class. Well, where is the interface portion of it? Well, we have these two methods here, public void, load data, and save data. Well, I can come over here and declare public void load data and make one change, public abstract void load data. Notice a semicolon at the end, similar to what we do in a interface. And what this does is it says, I'm not going to actually have any code for load data because the data load is going to look different for SQL versus SQL Lite. But I know you have to have one. Therefore, I'll declare it here as an abstract. Now let's do it one more time, this time for save data, and then we'll look at how it affects our child classes. So you have load data and save data as both being abstract. Now over here, we have a little bit of an error. It says, does not implement inherited abstract member. It looks kind of similar to what we have with an interface, where it says does not implement the interface. Now load data, 
hides inherited member. What this really means is we have to say override. Okay, so public override load data and save data. Now with it being an override, what it's saying is I'm going to basically implement load data over here in load data. And the way I do that is to override it. So I'm overriding the declaration and actually creating the implementation of load data. They have to do it over here as well. So now we have that blend of both interface and base class. We have some code that's coming from the base class, the, the abstract class, and we have some code that's being declared, I'm sorry, some methods, they're being declared, but not actually implemented until you get to the child classes, but saying you have to implement them. The benefit here is if we come over here, let's start over with this, and we say data access DA equals new. Notice it still says you can't implement data access itself, but we could say SQLite data access, and that works, kind of like an interface. Now we can say DA dot, notice to get the load data, load connection string, and save data. We can do all three things because data access declares all three things. It's just that it only implements the one and allows whatever class inherits it to implement the other two. So that's really the, the basics, the foundation of an abstract class. It blends both the base class and the interface. So now we can rework our code down here. So let's do that. So we'll uncomment this, and instead of I data access, we'll call it data access. And that's it. We now have the same exact code. It's just that instead of using an interface, we're using the abstract class as the class we call. And now we can have both the benefits of those declarations here as well as the shared code. Now there's one more thing I want to show you just in case it comes up in your mind or in case you need to do this. And this is basically just class inheritance, but I want to show you that it does still work in abstract class. So what if you wanted to override this load connection string? Well, if you came over here and let's just grab that um, definition here. If you were going to try and override this and say, oh, I'll just add override, that won't work. And the reason why it won't work is because it's not something that's overridable. If you want to override it, you have to still use the keyword virtual. That way you don't have to override it, but if you want to, you can. So here we can now actually implement this. Now it does say you have to return a value, which is fine. So we could say uh, string output equals base dot load connection string. Now what that base dot load connection string does, it says, okay, the first thing I want to do is I want to call the data access load connection string and have it do its work. You don't have to do that. You can just do your own work instead. But in this case, I'm going to use both the base processing as well as some extra stuff. So in here for the output, I'm actually going to say output plus equals uh, from SQLite, just to demonstrate that it's actually working. So I'm calling the base and getting its output, and then I'm adding from SQLite afterwards and returning that output. So now they come over here and Let's comment th these three things out so we don't have those distractions. And we could say console write line db dot load connection string demo. Doesn't really matter. We're not actually using it. Demo. 
And that's going to be for each the SQL data access as well as a SQL light data access. If we run this, notice we get test connection string for the SQL data access, but then test connection string from SQL light for the SQL light data access. And that's when we run the load connection string method. So we still have the ability, if we allow it using the virtual keyword, to overload or override the um, load connection string with our own version of it. We can still call the base version if we want. And so we have that flexibility just like you did to the base class. It's just we also now have the flexibility of, of having these interface-like member declarations. Okay, that's all there is to base classes. That's really it. Um, they're, they're pretty simple. Do you use those every day? No, this is not something you use every day. It's something that in certain specific cases you use. Now here is one big pitfall that I see people falling into. You've learned about abstract classes. And the same thing happens with, with class inheritance as well. But you learn about abstract classes and you go, okay, anytime I have two classes that have similar or the same code, I can create an abstract base class and put that code there, declare the rest, and it works just as good, if not better, than an interface. And that's not really true. Because you don't want to get into a messy inheritance situation. Inheritance really needs to be limited to things that really are whatever their parent is declaring. So their parent in this case is a data access class. Well, you shouldn't have something else that maybe needs a load connection string, but it's not data access. You shouldn't have that inherit from data access. It's, it's the idea of, you know, uh, car is a base class and then you have different types of cars. That's great. Don't try and fit a truck in there too, because a truck is not a car. Okay. So try and use the is a relationship. Um, so just, it's hard to say and, and get um, like that. So you're trying to say, you know, X is a Y. So SQLite data access is a data access class. You know, uh, uh, Dodge Neon is a car. A Toyota Tundra is not a car. Okay, so try and keep that is a relationship in place, just like we do normally for object oriented programming. So keep that in mind, just because this is a tool that's cool and it can bring some code in, doesn't mean you shoehorn it into every different situation where you need shared code. If you need shared code and there's not that relationship, maybe what you do instead is create a helper method or a helper class that both, uh, both uh, pieces can access. And if you need to, play around with different modifiers. So instead of public, you make it internal or protected or something else in order to allow you to shape that to just what you need to give access to. But don't just say, well, I have shared code, therefore an abstract class is the way to go. Okay, so that's my word of warning. I see it happen often enough that it, I think it's really important that I stress it that don't just force an abstract class wherever you think it's needed. Instead, make sure that that definitely follows the is a relationship first. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found it valuable. And if you have any questions, if you have anything you want me to cover about this or about other topics, leave that in the comments below. I try and you know respond to every comment. I try and take every suggestion and at least put it on a list. And then as those suggestions come in, I look at what's the most popular and try and tackle those. This video is one of those videos that's definitely a direct relationship to that. I had a number of people that were asking me about abstract classes, enough that I figured it was important that we cover it in a video. All right, thanks for watching. As always, I am Tim Corey.